This is AccuStats Video Productions, and we're coming to you from the Sands region in Reno, Nevada. This is this is the Sands number 22, and I'm Johnny Archer, along with Bill and Cardone, and so we're going to sit here and do the commentary. Well, thanks a lot, Johnny, but my name happens to be Bill and Cardona. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, as a matter of fact, we've, we're putting together another highlight tape, and there's one of the segments on the highlight tape where players mispronounce other people's names, and it's really hilarious. When mm -hmm. you get a chance, stop by the booth, and we'll play it for you. Okay, okay we, we might, I might even, do We that. might even add this one in on the next one. Okay. Anyways, tell us a little bit about the feature match uh, with, with the, the Rainbow Kid. Was it the Rainbow Rain Warrior? The Rainbow Warrior, oh, Rodney Morris, against uh, Little David, the Giant Killer. Okay. Giant you know who that Howard. is? That's David Howard. David Howard. Well, we're gonna. Ha I think we're gonna have a kind of a fast match here. It's hard to say how David's gonna play because he hadn't played uh, that much this year. But David always is a good player. And well, before we get a chance to say anything, it's one nothing on the break. You know, uh, in the last feature match on this table that we did between Nick Varner and uh, Danny Medino, the nine ball really didn't have a chance of going in on the break. They racked the balls 20 some odd times, and the nine ball really didn't even come close to going in on the break. So it was surprising to me to see the Rodney Pocket at the nine on the, mm -hmm. on the first game here. This table has really been stubborn, it's been playing very stubbornly in, in regards to giving up balls on the break. And I didn't, I didn't think that uh, he, you would see that kind of action on the nine. Mm -hmm. But uh, Rodney does have a big break, so. Rodney breaks the balls well. Rodney plays well. He, you know, he's a smart player. He's, he just makes a lot of good decisions for a young player. Exactly how old is, is Rodney Morris? Do you know? uh, I would have to guess. I think my guess is around 23 or 24, something like that. So he's one of the young the young players on the tour. Yeah, he certainly is. And uh, at the age of 23 and 24, you wouldn't think that he could compete against the greatest players in the world and hold his own, but that's not the case with Rodney Morris. He's uh, not only been able to hold his own, I believe he's won a major event. Is that, is that true? Or, mm. or has no, he, he come, short? he come in uh, second. He's second against Jim Rempe. And that was at the uh, Valley Forge time. Yes, that was the Valley Forge King of Prussia. Year. Sure was. He played yeah. really well there. Had a chance to win. Jimmy, it was two out of three sets, and it come down to the last set and went down to the heel, I think. So well, uh, any time you, uh, you can hold your own against a player or the likes of Jimmy Rempe, who's really one of the better players in the world today, you really have to play some good nine ball, and Rodney Morris is quite capable of doing that. Okay, Billy, now it's back to the game. He's like he's trying to play safe, and he's hit it pretty well. Did he hit it hard enough? I don't know. I don't believe he hit it hard enough, and David can see a portion of the one ball. Mm, he sure can. He can make it in the side. Just like he can make it the way he's looking at it. He can just pocket it right in the side, <coughs> draw it back. Well, then there's a number of things that he can do with this shot. Okay, David. Jumped up a little bit, but that seems to be the oh, a characteristic of that David Howard. He jumps a lot when David he plays. David jumps a lot, yeah. He, he kind of gets ants in his pants a little bit when he plays. It's kind of a, kind of a shot that could get him going here. Pocket this and get out here. He's going to have to apply a little bit of right hand English mm. on the cue ball, making sure he stays on top or above the nine. Right. That was a good shot he made. Let's okay. take a look at the layout. The three naturally in front of the lower left-hand corner. The four adjacent to the three cross table, close to the lower right-hand corner of the five ball up table, nearest the upper right-hand corner pocket. Yeah, one good thing about it that he has uh, with getting to the five to the six is that the six is on the same side as the five is on that side of the table, so it kind of gives him a big area on the other side. But he would like to get uh, stay to the left of the five yeah, and go naturally one to two cushions cross table for position for the six. You know, on that shot, what That's I like to shot. do is I like to hit the second rail, come off the second rail a little bit and assure myself of the right angle. I think it's easier to judge the speed that way too. Yeah, it is a little bit. It could, get, it could either get away from me or stop short the other way, the way you played it. But he could have got straight in here, Billy. It looks like he's going to get straight in, Johnny. And in the event that he does, which he has, he's going to have to accept the shot in the corner pocket unless he has an angle to force it out. I think he can do a little something with it. He's got a spin. Well, he didn't put any spin on the ball. If you're going to, if you're going to draw it out of there, you're going to have to put a little bit of turn on the cue ball in order to uh, lengthen out the angle off the second cushion. Yeah, you just show him try to bank it in. 
This should be hit kind of far, my bet. Ooh. Well, you know, it went in, though. hit a little roughly, but nevertheless, it went into the side pocket. In. That's game number two. It goes to David Howard. He ties up the match at one game apiece. And the feature match uh, <coughs> between Nick Varner and Danny Medina, they really had problems trying to rack the balls on this table. The balls just wouldn't freeze for Medina. Had problems with the one? They had problems w w with the one for sure and probably other balls because they really uh, were, were spending a lot of time racking the balls on, the, on this table. And that's one of the reasons why that match really lengthened out because of the amount of time they spent trying to rack the balls. But uh, no problem here. David Howard seems quite content with the rack rod he pushed up so he's in addressing the table and preparing to break the balls in game number three. By the way, he didn't push a beat over on his side. Mm, yeah, we know the score. Watch this break. David's really got a good break. Hits the balls really hard. And he made the corner ball. And the cue ball was going right in. Did you see that? Yeah, and he got one, a, one knocked it out. Yeah, he got a fortuitous roll there, the one ball. Got a what? Hmm? What'd you say? I said he got lucky there, Johnny. And uh, I thought you said some <laughs> kind of weird word. Maybe it's just me. Okay. Say that again. I, don't I said that. he got lucky, John. Okay, okay. I didn't. Okay, so he's got the one here. So he's just going to try to... This could be kind of tricky here, Billy, at the angle he has, don't, don't you think? Well, I think he'll go somewhere in the area where the five is. Maybe go into the five. Oh, he was able to hit it thin enough. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he pushed the five out of the way where he can take a natural pass toward the three, staying slightly on the left side of the three, or possibly even straight in. And he hit that pretty hard, John. That could be close there, Billy. Oh, it stopped for him. Well, if you could play position like that every shot, you'd be unbeatable. I yeah. mean, really, unbeatable. That's perfect position. Cue ball close to the object ball. No risk of no missing risk of the missing shot. It. But it's so difficult to play close position like this with any regularity. And uh, I've never seen anyone do it. Anyways, uh, I thought the ball got away from when we first struck it. But that yeah, it did like it was a little fast, in it? This is a shot to where he kind of, he's got to watch himself. You don't want to get, um, I don't think he wants to get to the left side of the five, does he? Uh, it looks like if he gets straight in on the five, that'll suffice so for it. Oh, yeah. yeah that's good that's right good there. Shot. That's, that's good shot. I perfect. didn't think he could uh, bring it back that didn't much. Didn't like to bring yeah. it back. He was hitting the four full enough, evidently. That's a good shot staying yeah. on the high side of the six ball, and that's the correct side of the six ball you want to be on. If you have to be on one side or the other, this is the correct side. You'll be able to stay on this side of the table, and actually the nine is to the left of the table, so you want to stay on the right of the table. Mm -hmm. David Howard and Morris are tied up at one apiece. Howard looking to change the score here. Two games to one in favor of Howard. And why is it, uh, Johnny, that, that David has really been inactive of late on the tour? Well, David's got a got his pool room at uh, in Jacksonville, and yeah, David has his pool room in Jacksonville, and he's just he's really been concentrated a lot on that, trying to get it going. And now that he has, I think he's he's going to start playing a little bit more. He has more up on the tour. He has a billiard to play in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. also. Yes, he and, does. And now, obviously, he has incorporated that into his room, or, or mm -hmm. is it a separate entity? No, I think it's the same, the same one. And it is. He says he does a lot of fishing on the lake, and he's got him a boat, so uh, he kind of took a little time off, and I think he's going to start playing a little bit more. So you'll be seeing David a little more out here. David's a great asset to the tour. Really great player. Really breaks the balls hard. I mean, man, he breaks them hard. And he always has had a great break. Okay? Sure has. Yeah. And when you look at his physique, very similar to yours, of course, he's developed more of a pot belly now at his age. <laughs> but, but of course, it's, it's, it really, his physique is similar to yours. He's slender. And why is it that he and you yourself break the ball so well? Well, I think it's more, uh, the break is not, you know, more of power, it's not of raw strength. You don't really have to have that. Uh, just like a golf swing, you don't have to have a, a big, you don't have to be a big person to hit the ball a long way. You have to have, generate 
uh, in golf you have to generate club head speed. So just being whippy, you know, being able to get it through fast, and that's the same on the brake. You got to generate stick speed instead of power. Uh, does you do you use your wrist at all when you break the ball? Um, I probably do. I'm not certain, but I probably do. And and um, you know, I generate more timing, getting my body, you know, more into it, you know, and trying to use my body more to uh, generate the speed than, than my arms. So that's a good technique, and it works well for you. And obviously, David has a similar technique. In the mean in the meantime, he made an excellent shot on the one ball. Pocketing the one in the side, going to two cushions out of the upper left hand corner, finally coming to rest. Just about perfect line for the two. Yeah, David looks like he's playing well. He's got some confidence and hitting the balls in the center. Certainly is an indication that he must be practicing a lot in Jacksonville. Oh, I would have to uh, say that David, you know, really does uh, practice a lot. And, you know, um, to tr whenever he does decide to come out and play, that he thinks he's you know as ready as he can be but it's still uh, it's still tough because you're not under the heat you're not up here playing all the time so it's still kind of tough you know to perform when you do get up yeah you really have to be tournament tough to do well in major tournaments I mean you can practice all you want at home and but if you don't get a lot of tournament experience it's really unlikely that you're going to do well in tournaments but uh, Here's a fellow right here that has a lot of tournament experience. Yes, that's one but thing. But none of late. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Billy, if I jumped in on you there. Oh, that's quite all right. You know, you know anyone well, else, I, w I would be offended. But you, no problem. Well, <laughs> probably being with uh, Grady Matthews, you know, he's probably used to it. David's really uh, seems to be playing quite well out there. Seems comfortable. He's not really jumping like he did in the first shot of the match. He's handling the cue ball nicely, which yes, is a strong is. indication that he's playing well and comfortable. Game number four goes to Howard, who now has strung three consecutive games off and leads Rodney Morris by the score of three games to one. Yes, uh, looks like it's going to be a tough road for Rodney from here out because David looks like he's got his break working. And that's one thing about David and a lot of the other guys, Strickland, a lot of the guys that's breaking. If a table's breaking tough, you know, they can still, you know, overcome it, you know, with the breaks that they have. Exactly. That's, I, I think that the bigger breakers really have an advantage when the table is breaking tough because of that reason. Yeah, they really don't cut down on their opportunities over the opportunities of their opponents. True. Simply because when their opponent breaks the balls on a tough breaking table, they very rarely pocket a ball on the break. And so he's going to earn, that's mm. the second time he got kissed down that end of the table. This time, nothing stopped the ball from going into the corner pocket, ending up scratching. Rodney Morris now has ball in hand, trailing three games to one with a perfect opportunity to close the gap. So how do you play position here? Do you go in between the four and the eight, or do you, go, or you take the other routes? Well, I can't really tell the uh, angle. It's hard to uh, tell. But I think he's, he's elected the safe route to kind of go two rails uh, and kind of go toward the two ball with it. But then where the three's at, it kind of makes it kind of tough. That's made a that scratch. Side pocket that is made very a scratch. Big. Ooh. He flirted with danger there, John. I don't know if I would accept that type of a shot there. Well, what I think, I just think he, uh, he, didn't, um, he didn't take his time enough to, uh, to shoot to see where he was aiming the ball at. I don't think he really uh, positioned the cue ball in the correct place. I think that was the correct shot. I just think he didn't place the cue ball where he was supposed to. Well, it looked like a good shot only because he was heading toward the two on the line of position where he needed to be. Mm -hmm. But uh, flirting with that side pocket, if that's what he had to do to attain the correct angle, seemed to me a bit too risky. Yeah, if he had to, I don't think he had to go that close to the side. Okay, David has elected to play safe. If he can go between the five and nine here, uh, this may be, may be a pretty good shot for Rodney. Shoot and kick off the rail and stop behind the five nine. Do you think he can get in there and get that deep behind the two and, able, and be able to hold the ball? Yeah, it's pretty close. Um, I think if he can get in there, I think it's a shot he should, he should try. Oh, he's trying to cut it thin. He can see the edge of the two. That's a good shot. He may even hook David behind the behind seven. Behind the eight. Or behind the seven, yeah. Yeah, it rolled far enough. Kind of a fast table, so mm -hmm. give him a little bit of a roll. 
Uh, fatuit, what do you say? Gratuity roll? No, that's not gratuity. Gratuity is what we leave the waiter, what you never do anyways, but... Uh, no, that's <laughs> not true now. Unlike you, Billy. Gratuitous roll. Fortuitous. 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 Okay. Yeah. Fortuitous. That's One roll I always say, if I can't roll. spell the word, I don't use it. So it's... Well, I can understand that. Uh, yeah. So that really limits you then. No, not really. Considerably. I, I was, I was, uh, you know, I was one of the top spellers in my my school. You know, and then, uh, you know, of course, that only went up to about three or four grades. But we're talking about, you know, five and six letter words now. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that could be trouble. Okay, back to the game here. Okay, just gonna have a shot here. It's, it looks like the cue ball has finally come to rest and left him, left him a pretty left good him angle. Uh, some type of an angle on the two to go you know, two cushions and toward the four ball, which is positioned near the center of the table, slightly to the left of the seven. The three ball is positioned near the lower right hand corner, so if he's able to go two cushions and not find himself behind the four, he'll come up with a shot on the three. In between the seven and four. Okay, good shot. <coughs> I think he'd just come one rail up, don't you think, Bill? Yeah, and there's nothing 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 more he can do than just go one cushion up and just stay on this line. You gotta watch out for these fast tables, Billy. He's getting a little closer to the four than he wanted, and now it looks like he's gonna have to choose an alternate route for position on the five. I think this I think this one table they're playing on plays a little bit faster than the other tables in the in the tournament. I'm gonna tell you, I don't know if I would have shot that ball like that. And now he has to deal with the nine. Yeah, he has to watch out for the nine. He's going to shoot the seven in the left-hand side pocket, I think, is what he's going to try to do. Huh? Well, he's doing a lot of unnatural stuff out there, and when you continue to play position in that fashion, you end up usually in the chair. But yeah. uh, let's I see if he I think he's okay it. here. He actually got back in line here. Okay. Yep, he got a good shot on the eight. Eight, come back for the nine. No, well, that'll work fine. There's no problem with this. Uh, right, right now, the score is three games to one in favor of Howard. Now three two. Three games to two in favor Still of Howard. Still anybody's Howard. match here. Yeah, it's early in the match, and I look for I look for this to be a very close, interesting match because both of these players are quite capable. They both have big breaks, and uh, I think that the player that gets the most opportunities from their breaks is the one that's going to turn out to be I the think winner so in this too. match. So far, David's uh, been breaking the ball as well. Let's see how well Rodney breaks them. Well, what about the other matches on the other tables, Bill? It's like Rodolfo Luas ahead of number one player, Efren Reyes, three to one. Um, Jeff Carter's ahead of CJ Wiley, three to one. So I mean, uh, them are the other one winner side matches. Oh, that was a Boy, real a good, good break, break there. He stopped the cue ball, dead center. Stopped it on a dime, didn't he? He certainly did. Mm. If he can continue to break the balls like that, uh, <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to beat him. But, of course, that was a special type of a break we just saw there. Okay, with the 2-8 combination, he has to control the uh, two ball and also the cue ball. Yeah, this could be a tricky shot, Billy. Um, I don't know if I really like trying to float down low and try to hold the two there. Oh, he's using roll English. Okay. That was a good shot. And the two, uh, the two escaped the vicinity of the pocket a little more than he wanted. Now he's going to have to do something a little different, at least from uh, the vantage point that I have. Yeah, he went cross table. And yeah, that was a good shot. He hit it well. Rodney is a very straight shooter. He really... He looks like he's going to have to draw those two questions out because of the presence of the nine. He can't go forward. Good shot. Yeah, I like what he did there. He kept on the left side of the four, so he doesn't have to go into the seven. And he's found himself in real good line on the five. So eight, seven's about where the eight was last last game. This is good. He'll go two cushions two towards cushions the seven, towards staying seven. on the correct angle. And the closer he gets to the seven, the easier it'll be for him to get from the seven to the nine, yeah, providing that he keeps his angle. I think it's uh, looking pretty good for him. Game. Now he can either play this long or short. I think you need to play it short. He played yeah, it I long. wouldn't play the ball long. Playing yeah. it short, you assure yourself of a shot on sure the line. You, you don't shot. scratch ever. 
playing it long, sometimes you fall short of the mark, you end up with no shot on the nine. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, I, I agree with the, I agree with your, your suggestion of playing it short, opposed to playing it long, but as well as he hit that yeah, shot, Rodney I can't argue with Yeah, really it. well. You can't argue with that. Sometimes if you just have a little more confidence than normal, uh, you know, you can do things. Just play them a little, make sure you get a shot, and get the easy shot. Well, we got a tie match, Billy. Three to three. See if he can hit the break like yeah, he did I'm last time. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing if he can hit the break as well as he did last time, stopping the cue ball dead center. He hit well. He, he hit it well. He hit it well, but he did lost a little ball. bit. But I think he got got a safety out of it, or no? Maybe. Well, David's gonna have to play a safety. Is he going to try to cut that in the side, Billy? It's actually a tough safety. It looks like he can do a lot of different things here. He can roll this ball and get behind the eight. Well, well, I think he's going to leave a shot. Hard. He's going to leave a shot. He's going to leave a shot here, and, uh, and from the angle that I can see, Looks like all he needs to do is pocket the one with a slight bit of inside left-hand English. Playing position for the two in the side. Always, uh, I don't like coming. I, it can get away from you here. You can miss the ball. I like leveling off on this. How would yeah, you do I it? think I think you just need to hit a little bit of the left top English for what he's got and just roll the ball up the center of the table. Kind of like that. And he was able to hit a little firm uh, like he wanted to. He's found himself in an awkward position. It looks like he's got a pocket the, th the two ball in the lower left hand corner in the angle that he has suggests that the two balls, the cue ball is going toward the four. And you don't want to end up behind the four in the shot, but yet you can't force it away from there because you're not going to end up with a shot on he's the three. In the corner, I think. Yeah. And yeah. he's done that. He's end up behind the four. Yeah. Was the say was the uh, side pocket there? Could he could he make it in the side pocket there? No, he couldn't make it in the side, and he oh, couldn't, couldn't force it where he would come off that side cushion because of the because the of the side pocket. Yeah. So he had uh, a little bit of a problem that he wasn't able to deal with. Okay. He's got billiard or a combination here. I kind of like the combination because you have a two-way shot here, and, and not only pocketing the nine but a good chance of leaving your opponent hooked behind the five and eight if you don't pocket the nine. So therefore, he's opting to play the combination. I look for him to try to control the cue ball, leaving great distance, perhaps even behind the five eight if he misses the nine. Well, see, he put all his emphasis and concentration into pocketing the nine and disregarded the controlling of the cue ball. I like that better. Yeah? I like the shotty shot better. I think if you're gonna, sometimes when the balls are like that, you Sometimes you got uh, you got something in your mind that you're gonna well I play safe here if I miss it or something like that I think you know if it's setting like that you you need to either go for it or don't I don't think there's any uh, should be any well oh, I can't argue thinking. I can't argue with that because you increase the accuracy of the shot somewhat how much I I don't know I didn't know exactly what kind of shot he had but uh, that time it didn't work for him maybe the next time it will yeah. after game number seven Morris has the lead in the match now by the score of four games to three. Yeah, this match is just moving it along. There's no question about that. Both players play, you know, with a pretty good tempo. I mean, they're they're not they're not the real deliberate. So therefore, we expect a quick match, and I think we're going to get the fairly so. fairly quick match. So, Billy, when are you going to start back playing on the tour? Uh, Johnny, uh. I'll probably play in the world tournament. Yeah. Why are you winking at me like you? No, I'm I'm having a lot of problems pocketing balls, John. You I, are. Yeah, I okay. haven't been playing at all. I just play safe more often. Well, you know, I played safe a lot before I had the problems pocketing balls. Oh, you did. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, David kind of got a fortuitous roll again. Fortuitous roll. Fortuitous, yeah. Fortuitous. Uh, what do you do here, John? Do you go after the combination here? I like going after the combination. Um, I don't play as many safeties as a lot of other guys. I see if I have a chance to, to pocket a ball, even though it's a high-risk shot, if I have a, there's a good chance of pocketing the ball, I'm going to try to pocket it. He's playing safe behind something here. Behind the three. See, I just, there's just too many things could happen. And, you know, if you pocket the ball, you know, you're going to win. If you don't pocket the ball, if you play safe, even if you get to safety, you still might lose. So. Yeah, and that's illustrated also in our highlight tape. There's a lot of situations where the, the player at the table played a safe. The incoming player ended up kicking it in or, or doing something offensively to win that particular game. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, what you just made a, a noteworthy point when you said if you have a chance to pocket a ball and if you have the ability to pocket a ball, go ahead and pocket it or at least try to. Well, at least uh, one, one thing I do know, if I'm under a heat situation and, and I have a choice of uh, either pocketing the ball or going for the safety, I'm always going to decide to try to pocket the ball even though I may miss and, and uh, lose the match, but at least I know I, that I went down trying. Well, anytime you're faced with a dilemma where you really don't have a good safety or a good offensive shot, you're probably off, probably better off going for the offensive shot. Yeah, you know, because, you know, just a lot of, there's so many guys nowadays just kick so well, uh, even if you do, you know, uh, leave them, you know, a kick shot, there's a lot of times they can kick you safe or, or kick the ball in. It's just, they just do a lot of things nowadays, a lot more than they used to. And you really end up feeling foolish when you go after a safety, you end up leaving your opponent straight in. Oh, yeah. yeah you that, know, that's that another makes, thing that yeah. can happen, exactly. Yeah. You lose a little respect in your game when you do something like that. Sure and it kind of hurts a lot of players, and uh, it's understandable why it would. In the meantime, Morris uh, went after the safety, and he looks like he got rewarded for it. He uh, leads in the match four games to three, and now he's found himself with an opportunity to lengthen the lead to five games to three if he can come with the shot. He's following this ball. Do you like this? Um, well. I like the results, but. Uh, Maybe he just a little more straight in than, uh, than we kind of thought he was. Hmm, look what he done there. Just the nine, I can't. Well, he was a little, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I want to use another word here, impetuous there. He shot that pretty quickly. Now David's uh, shooting with his brake cue. <laughs> he is? Yeah. I didn't know that. He just shot with his brake cue. I guess he decided that, that he didn't want to feel like walking back to the chair. Well, maybe he'll be using a regular cue to break him with now. Yep. Kind of weird, but I guess he didn't think he could miss it. Yeah, that could have been a big swing there, missing the nine ball there for Rodney. That's uncharacteristic for Rodney. He usually pockets the balls really well. Oh, well, he just was careless there. You know that. He, he shot that shot before he was ready. I think so. Before he was ready, because any time you have a shot like that and you're prepared to shoot it, you're not going to miss it. You're just not going to miss it. Well, David mishit the one, but I think he's going to be rewarded with a little bit of a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Luat uh, leading up from Reyes, six games to two. Just missed the one ball, quite a yeah. simple shot in the corner. But leading Reyes six games to two, you know, and shooting at a shot like the one he just missed, you would think that he would put a lot more emphasis on pocketing that ball, giving himself a real ex an excellent chance of defeating Reyes. But of course, for Luan to defeat Reyes is more of a task than one of the Americans to defeat him because of, uh, you know, Reyes is probably his, his hero and his idol True. and, and, you know, just... One thing about Luan, he really plays hard on the real top players. That's one thing he does. He, he has to play uh, myself or Strickland or, or Davenport. He really, really concentrates hard a lot more than, than I guess he would play him. Uh, more of a less player. Well, I think uh, of the finals or of the second chance tournament, I think is going on down there, or maybe it's semifinals or something, but it's Jeanette Lee and 
my boys. You know, Janet Jeanette Lee won or finished second in last year's mm -hmm. tournament here. Danny Medina beat her in the finals. Yep, sure did. Okay, back to the match. Uh, we have David on the three. Like he's gonna have to play a combination on the five. A possible billiard also is a possible available. billiard. I don't really know about the billiard, Billy, because I think Stan is he has to hit the four. Couldn't the cue ball like float forward and go behind the nine? No, it will, it'll, it'll so? go on the other side of the nine. On the other side of the nine. Sure. Yeah, I, I kind of like him hitting with a little more speed, anyways, and I think uh, he'll be able to play the four in the lower right hand corner. If he, if he bait, well, so now right. from the angle that he's on now, okay. Now, the angles he's on now, he yeah. might not be as easy as, no. as it could have been. Okay, he's now he runs the a, runs a risk of going behind the nine. There it goes. Yeah. No, he hit it easy enough to where it stopped. Rodney Morris has taken the chair to the left <coughs> of the table and is actually blocking our view to the table. Yeah, so maybe uh, Rick, you, you or Pat, you can have someone ask the players uh, to sit on the other side of the table, uh, well, giving us a little easier right time with our job. Okay, Dave is straight up with the six. I think he's going to cut it to the right corner. Just trying to ho try to hold his cue ball for the eight in the lower right corner. Okay. okay. Be gentle, Billy. It's kind of loose, Pat. Okay, there. Billy worked on it. Okay. He missed this ball. Oh, uh -huh. I thought he missed that ball. I thought he overcut it. Why would you think that, Billy? It just. My eyes failing me. Oh, again. Okay. Okay. He's just gonna roll this ball with a little bit of a left-hand English. He was kind of jerked a little on that, but that's that's uh, understandable. Okay. Scores five to four. It's a big miss for Rodney Morris. He could have been up five to three, but now it's five four. The other favorite. In the meantime, C.J. Wiley is in front of Jeff Carr four games to three after trailing at one time one game to three. So he's won three consecutive games. Yep. And now Reyes looks like he's going to come back to six to four after being uh, being down six two and and Luat shooting at the one. So a couple uh, changes in these matches. Actually got pretty good for the combination on the three. Do you think he can make the one three combination? Oh yeah. Yeah, he can make the one three combination. He's just gonna have to cut the one just a little bit. Got it a little straight on the one, but and he's gonna have to stretch a little also. This could be kind of tricky because okay, he's looking at somebody. Did somebody mess him up? He can draw right down toward the area where the six is. I think so. I think that's the shot, Billy. But then, then you risk going toward the two if you had to catch the rail kind of early, don't you think? Hey, listen. I mean, this is not an easy shot. You're gonna have to take some risk somewhere. True. So therefore, I think he should draw that draw down the cushion toward the six, which he's done quite nicely. And yeah. let's take a look at the results. Hitting the Looks six, good. and he is going toward the two, but uh, he didn't brush the thick six thickly enough to go in toward the two. It was a very thin brush, light brush, I should say. 
and he ended up in pretty good shape. Mm, this match has really took a turn for, for the worst there. For Rodney, not for David. Right, for the, if you're Rodney, is taking a turn for the worst. Okay, five. They come a little short on that play. Yes, he did, and uh, kind of unusual to see a, a top player, the caliber of David, coming a little short on that shot. Okay, he's got to watch that for losing his cue ball here. Okay, he made it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I this is a this is a pretty tough shot getting this ball back. I think this. Well, it's just hard to say. I think he's just going to go up to the rail and back over, back where he's at now with the cue ball. Okay. And he scratched, and Mr. Yates all at the same time. He tried to create more of an angle than it went to, uh, was offered to him, and in doing that, he missed the eight, and he scratched cross side. Well, he was really a great distance from the eight, and uh, certainly have he had uh, misjudged that shot. I tell you what, I believe I might have tried to just draw the cue ball back up on the same side as the of the table as the eight was on. It evidently had a little bit of an angle going that way, or he wouldn't have tried to do what he done. I bet. Okay, another big change. Let's see what this uh, what this does. Here's five to five. Johnny and I were looking at, uh, at the match on the adjacent table, and uh, what's this fellow's name? Just broke the balls. Um, Mark. Mark. Mark, Mark Hanna, I think. Uh, exactly. That's exactly what his name is. I'd just like to be. Uh, I'd just like to have his break. <laughs> well, um, I believe I might work on it a little. <laughs> yeah. Just work on it a little bit. Well, meantime, Rodney's broke the balls and he's got a shot on the one in the side pocket or the corner, whichever one he likes to shoot it in. He just likes to shoot it in the side. Watch out for the other side. Okay. Okay, got the two ball. Come up for the three in the side. Billy, you got to say something. How's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> How's your pal Tony doing? <laughs> Tony? <laughs> That's your pal too, isn't he? Yeah, I like Tony. Tony Allen, he's a real character. Yeah, Tony's okay. But the Roddy seems to be laboring out on here, Johnny. It seems like he's having a problem controlling the cue ball tonight. Yeah, he's not. Uh, he's not in line every shot tonight. He wasn't really happy being at this event. I was told uh, he didn't want to come to this tournament, and uh, it certainly has reflected in his play, at least in this match. Even yeah, sometimes when you don't feel like being there is tough to play. It certainly is, you know. I mean, if you don't really have the, uh, the desire to win, quite often it does reflect in your play. Made a good shot there. He's got the six. Knock the nine up. Make nine a little easier. Mm -hmm, but he still has to come with a tough shot. It's quite a distance from the eight. Any time you create this much distance in between two balls, it's a tough shot. Good but shot. Uh, he was able to handle it. Well, this is a similar type shot he missed earlier, Billy. Well, this was a little more difficult than the shot that he missed. But look, he's bearing down on this one. It's not certainly not, not taking this one for granted. No, I don't think he was really shooting too quick at that one. He told me uh, before the match started, about an hour or so before the match started, that he really doesn't play well under the, uh, in front of the cameras. 
No. No. He, and uh, I don't know. I guess some people don't play as well. How do you play in front of the cameras, really? I'm kind of off and on. Sometimes I play well. Sometimes I don't. Took me a while to kind of get used to it, though. I tell you, a player that really played well in front of the cameras, and I'm certainly sure you'll agree with me, is Mike Siegel. Oh yes. Oh boy, he Mike just Mike always played well on oh, the cameras. Oh yeah. He, uh, he ate it up. Yep, he had a good time with it, and that's something you have to do. Yeah. You have to have a good time with it. Yeah, that was a good shot there. One's coming down by the nine. It's actually something Rodney didn't really want. But it's a fair trade-off, though. Uh, oh, yeah. I trade it off any day of the week, positioning the cue ball behind the seven, even though there's an outside chance you know, your opponent can make the nine. I mean, it doesn't Correct. figure. Lua leading by only one game in the match against Trey is six games to five, and Carter has taken the lead off of Wiley five games to four. This match is six for Morris, five for Howard, and naturally Howard's at the table kicking at the one with an outside chance of pocket and nine. That's not what happened. The, uh, I'll leave a shot too. Definitely going to leave a shot. So now Ronnie gets out of his chair thinking, oh, I'm glad I played safe there. And now he's at the table with a shot on the one. The two position near the upper left-hand corner. Yes, he would like to. Actually, where the cue ball is now, maybe a little closer to the two, would be just ideal on this shot because he wouldn't have to deal with the seven or the five. This is a, a perfect angle for the two. And he looks like he's attained that type of an angle. He would like to stay on the right side of the three, the side of the table that he's standing on, because then right. he's on that side of the three, then he can swing either two cushions or one cushion up the table for the five. I like two cushions myself. Yeah, I like just following this ball. Coming two cushions, kind of just to the left of the five. Right, stay long on this shot and uh, close to the five. The closer you are to the five, the more apt you are to end up with an angle on it. Okay, that, that's going to work out well. He's, he's just better off just lengthening it out and come straight down table. Yeah, on the I shot. think just coming straight down, hitting the side rail down here past the side pocket is the shot. Just well, like that. That's exactly what he's done. Yeah, that's the right shot. He doesn't want to get real straight because if he gets real straight, he's going to find himself in a little bit of a problem considering, considering the position of the nine. He may even brush the nine here, Johnny. No. Nope. I think he might have been trying to. He really shouldn't have because, you know, uh, I like playing position to the right side of the table for the eight, spinning around two cushions for the nine. Like that. And being left-handed, this is ideal. It's ideal for him. Just come, now you come three cushions here for the nine. And that's exactly what he's done. Four cushions. Notice the position of the nine, position very close nice to the bottom. a little bottom closer cushion. than he wanted, I think. With all the speed. You don't really have to be that, you know, that accurate with the speed of the cue ball considering the position of the nine positioned so closely to the bottom cushion. Had the nine been four or five inches off of the bottom cushion, then the speed of the cue ball becomes more important. Right. Because uh, quite often you find yourself behind the nine, and that's certainly not where you want to be. After end of game number 12, Morris now has a two-game lead in the match. It's seven games to five. After trailing in the match, four games to five. So therefore, he's won three consecutive games. Yeah, David missed the eight ball. That's the same thing that Rodney done earlier to to let David in. Then David missed the eight. Now he looks now he's trailing. Watch out for the side pocket, which it doesn't pay attention, and finally scratching in the side. In the meantime, the, the one and the five are tied up, but I do believe he can either pocket the one or the nine to the side pocket. I don't think he could pocket the one. Just shooting at the nine here. See, I don't like putting it that close to the cue ball. You know, so you can see here on the camera, and it's that's just kind of close because now you run a risk of uh, fouling the ball. 
course, he's putting it closer he is to the one, the more he don't want to have to shoot from off the rail. Close, cue ball close to the rail. Hit it good. That's, that's a good shot. Well, you see, there's another uh, another uh, thing that you have to look at when you put a ball with, when you put the cue ball that close to the object ball, is that you can line it up the way you see it, and then is, and you're more apt to pocket the combination because when you line up, you know you're going to hit the spot that it's lined up for. True. See so more often, so therefore you t it's a fair trade-off. Yeah. Well, as I long as you develop the stroke to quickly get away from the cue ball. Right? I really don't, though. I'm going to tell you, I, I have more of a chance of making it, putting the cue ball the other way, because when I put it close like that, I line it up a certain way, but I always seem to either put English on it or, or do something funny to kind of throw it off. Well, years ago, I'm talking about years ago now, when Eddie Kelly and Ronnie Allen and Jersey Red and players like that were playing the game, I noticed that when they got ball in hand on a combination, they put it real close. Did they? Yeah, they put it real close, and that's the way I learned to play combinations when I had ball in hand. And apparently, uh, David possibly uh, may have learned uh, the same way, so therefore, he, uh, he has executed this yard very similar to the way I would have. Okay, made the eight. Comes he's going to get a, a shot. He's going to get a line. shot. Could have been a big scratch. He's, there's been two or three big momentum swings in this match. A couple balls missed. Now scratch on the break by Rodney. And anytime you really scratch straight in the side like he did, that's just a bad break. He really no bad luck to that. Just kind of miss hit the one and kind of scratches in the side. Carter ahead of Wiley, six games to four. Looks like uh, those two guys are winning them in threes. It was three to one, then it was four to three the other guy. Now it's six to, six to four the other guy. So yeah. therefore, Carter has the lead in that match six games to four, winning three consecutive games. Howard trails in his match against Morris on the feature table, six games to seven. No, I don't know what he plans on doing here. You know, he doesn't have a pocket for the three. After pocketing the two, he's going to have to go in the direction of the nine, and he's going to have to settle for the three-seven combination, something that I really wouldn't want to uh, settle for. True. Uh, I wonder if he can just roll the uh, two in and try to position the cue ball in between the four-seven for a shot on the three. That seems a little risky. I don't think but he has uh, the angle. I think he has too much angle for that. Well, he can even go uh, into the nine then, and the nine will stop the cue ball and possibly end up with a shot. I wouldn't want to play position for a combination on another ball like this. Yeah, he kind of went a little far with it too, didn't he? I'd rather take my chances of rolling it, maybe even hitting, brushing the nine. The worst you can end up with is a bank cross side, and that's not all that bad. It's probably just as difficult to make the bank cross side as it is to make the combination. And plus, if you have a bank cross side, if you happen to miss it, there's a good chance you may not leave your opponent a shot. True. But if you happen to miss this, it's curtains. Yeah, that's exactly right. I tell you what, he's got a he might have a, a two-way shot. He, he might can like shoot the combination and use the cue ball to try to pocket the nine. I think that might be what he's doing here, Billy. Because <coughs> he's hitting the low side of the nine, so the cue ball's actually... Oh, oh he's going there. around the nine. Good shot. Very good shot. So he must have been feeling quite good about shooting the combination to disregard the presence of the nine and go around it, opposed to trying to pocket the nine. That's right. So therefore, he put all his emphasis and uh, concentration into pocketing uh, the combination. Well, Luots went ahead of Efren. Reyes, 8 to 6. 6-4 six in favor of Carter. And on the feature table, Mars 7, Howard 6. I think that was the right shot, Bill, instead of coming across for the 4. Because where the 5's at to get to the 6 is, is really tricky. Yeah, this is, this is really easy here. The 9 ball is positioned very close to the corner pocket, and uh, it would really be a surprise to both of us if we would see David miss this season coming in. So at the end of game number 14, once again, the match is tied up now, with the score being seven games for Howard and seven games for Morris.
kind of looked like he was going to leave the table as when he broke the ball. The cue ball just glanced off of the one and it left the bed of the table and it, it ended up hitting the cushion. And fortunately for David, the cue ball stayed on the table. And he didn't make anything. And Rodney snookered and with actually a real tough push out. So. Well, I kind of like pushing out and leaving a bank on the one cross side by pushing up table. That's a pretty good push out there. Well, yeah. he leaves him straight on the one where he can't. He can't really do a whole lot with it. And it's kind of hard to, uh, well, for me to accept this type of a shot. Not only is it a great distance from the one, but uh, you'd have to hit it perfectly straight and draw the cue ball back down table. But it's kind of hard for me to pass the shot and allow a player like, like you to shoot it. So uh, I don't know if I would, uh, if I would shoot this shot, I might even play a safety. I on. think David is playing safe here. And he actually hit it good. He certainly did. He may even get behind the six. Clips to nine, yep. Perfect. <laughs> Rodney hit a good kick there. Well. Narrowly hitting the one. A near hit. And a near miss. <laughs> <laughs> Blue out at the table shooting the six ball leading eight games to six against Wales. And Howard at the table trailing no it's tied up seven games apiece and it does look like he has a chance to hit this ball. At least he's addressing it like he has a little bit of a window in between the five six. position the cue ball or I would and get play out, which is actually give the shot very nicely. Good shot. He hit that ball good. He needed to get as straight as he could on the four. Come back for the five. Mm, you want to hit that a little harder, I think, isn't you, Billy? Yeah, I don't think he has a problem. <coughs> oh, he actually had a little angle. It's okay. for the corner here. Two rails up. I like playing for the corner also. As long as you get on top of the eight, there shouldn't be any problem. He's got nine to go up eight to seven. And we have a good leader. Billy, I'm going to have to call it a night. I have to play uh, nine o'clock, and I'm going to go kind of refreshing up a little bit. Okay, uh, Pat. What time is it? Is it uh, Johnny has to leave, and maybe uh, Jay Hufford's there. Okay. Okay. okay enjoy it, guys. All right, good. All right, thanks a lot, Johnny. I enjoyed it also. And if you, uh, what I'll do is I'll get out of your way, and you can crawl around me. I'll take this mic off, and I'll trade this mic on over to Jay, and we'll be back in action.
Hey, Billy, how's the match? Hey, Jay, nice seeing you. Oh, I'm yeah, it's, it's been a pretty good match. I can, yeah, okay, my mic's back on. You can hear me now? Okay, uh, it's been a pretty good match, Jay. This is Jay Halford, by the way. Uh, Subbing for Johnny the, Archer. One of the fine tournament directors in the country today, and I might add a very fine player, too. I've done commentary with Jay before, and he's very insightful, by the way. So, uh, uh, this has been a good match, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Pat said, did I say frightful? Well, that Pat, too. stay out of the game. <laughs> Stick to directing, Pat. That's a nice safety that the Rod put down. It's interesting that the contrast, I've been watching the match up there uh, in the bleachers, and uh, it's kind of the old generation and the new generation. And uh, I think Rod is one of the brilliant young players in pool today. Yeah, R Rodney Morris is... 23 or 24 years old, but yet it doesn't show in his play. He plays like he's, you know, a veteran of the game. He, has a, he does a lot of things right when he plays nine ball. You wouldn't think at such a young age that he could do so many things right. Boy, but David Howard just made a real nice kick on the one, hitting the point of this corner pocket. Then he's ended up with a, some type of a shot on the two. Yeah, I've seen Ronnie play his excellent nine ball, excellent nine ball. Right now, I don't think he really has his head into the game, though, because I was told that he really didn't want to come to this event for some reason. Mm. And it has reflected somewhat in his play, but still he's able to, to play well. I think the politics of the moment in the, in the men's association is affecting some of the players who are involved in that situation, and Rod is one of them. Um, in regards to that, what I what I like about Rodney's game, he's besides being a terrific player, you know, with knowledge beyond his years, his composure is real good. Never hear a whimper out of him. No, he's a total gentleman when he's playing at the table, and and also when he's not playing. So therefore, you know, I have to give him all the respect in the world as a player and as a person because he certainly shows it in his actions both on and off the table. In the meantime, this match is rather close. Eight games for Rodney, seven games for Howard. Now, Howard really has been inactive uh, in the past couple of years. Right. He really hasn't played that much on the tour. Right. and uh, Been minding his store. Yeah, but he started out playing pretty solid nine ball, and I was really impressed, considering this long layoff, he would come back and play so well. And playing a player the likes of Rodney Moore, you really have to be prepared to play. Well, David had told me, I talked to him yesterday, uh, Billy. By the way, he's in a real jam here. He's just got, it's going to be hard for him to hit that three ball. Um, he may end up going two rails to hit the three ball. Uh, but David told me that he started playing the Florida Tour. He's going one rail at it. He's just going to have to make a good, solid hit on it and hope he gets lucky. And he got a little bit lucky here, although I think that uh, Rod can play this 3-6 combination. Anyway, David told me he started playing the Florida Tour, and that's a pretty strong tour, and he got stroke a little bit. And he really didn't want to come out on this tour, but uh, he has a contractual agreement with Miyuchi where um, they finally gave him an ultimatum. If he didn't play the tour, he was going to lose his contract. So he was kind of forced to come back out here. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. David has a lot of pride, so he won't come out here and play unless he's, he feels prepared. Rodney's style at the table. I think he gets over the ball extremely well. And he stays solid when he's at the table. So he took the words right out of my mouth. He's just real solid. Pretty solidly built young man, too. Yeah. I was th talking with somebody up there on the sidelines, and we were trying to estimate his weight, and they were guessing he's 220, 230. Mm -hmm. He's a pretty healthy young man. Yeah, he certainly is. This is game number 16, and with the pocketing of nine, Howard will shoot the board and then extend his lead in the match by two games, nine games to seven. And it's getting pretty late in the match, especially for Howard, because Morris has nine games, and Howard really can't afford to make another mistake, or else it'll probably be all over for him. Morris, on the other hand, can afford to make a mistake and still end up winning the match because he, he leads in the match nine games to seven, so that's the luxury of having a two-game lead at this stage of the match. 
and be breaking, and he's got, I think he's got one of the best breaks in the game, too. And I was really impressed with his cue ball control off of his big break. Usually when a young player has a big break, you know, he, it's haphazard, his cue ball, he loses his cue ball. But notice again, once again, Parks how well he controls the cue ball on the break, and that's really vitally important he, when you play world-class nine ball. That's the difference in his game from last year. Last year he was breaking just as hard, but the cue ball was going everywhere. Now I notice most of the time he parks it right in the middle of the table. So yeah, you have, you made a good observation there, Billy. And he hits him just as hard as he did before, too. Yeah, he doesn't really lose any velocity on his break, and he's still able to control the cue ball, which is really a rarity in young players. And uh, that's one of the m most impressive things I can see in, in, in young players, that is, is to see them control the cue ball off of the break, because that seems to be an area in all young players' games where they fall a little bit behind the better players. But not so in this case here. Well, he was trying to play a safe there, and I think he wanted to roll the two up past the three. He didn't do that, but I think that uh, Dave is hooked by the eight ball. Yeah, David has his hands full here. He's not able to see the two ball. He has to go to the rail. And uh, on this particular shot, I look for him to hit it with some speed because there really isn't any safety equity in this particular shot. There aren't any balls where he can just softly roll behind, so therefore he's going to have to hit it with some speed in hopes that he either pockets the two in the upper corner. But after hitting the two, the cue ball then should go toward the other end of the table, and the two ball, if he doesn't pocket it, should rebound off the bottom cushion and come back down this end of the table. So therefore I look for him to hit it with some speed. Well, he's going like to have to so. get awful lucky here because these balls are all spread out, too. Yeah, well, he tried to get lucky, but uh, he didn't. So, meantime, Moore steps back to the table. And like I said before, really, Howard really can't afford to make any more mistakes. Not that that was a mistake, but still, it's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity for Morris. Well, I think Rod's just going to... It looks like he, it's hard to tell, but it looks like he's actually throw, drew it over to the side there a little bit, yeah. I don't see any problem for him the rest of this rack. No, all he needs to do is you know, keep uh, keep focused, strong concentration, regardless of how simple the run-up may appear. You don't want to get careless, and that was that was uh, witnessed and evidenced by the match between Medina and Varner in the last round, the feature match. Medina was playing so solidly in through the entirety of the match, and he finally found himself on the hill, leading Varner 10 games to five, with a relatively simple position shot from the seven to the nine. He got totally clear, careless on the shot and scratched in the corner pocket. Well, I think that's been Danny's downfall through the years, is his carelessness. Yeah, but you live by the sword, and then you die by the sword. If he does, if he didn't play that way, then he would have to slow up his play, be more of a del uh, deliberate player, and who knows how well he would play, playing deliberately. So therefore, he's done quite well with, with the style he has. So at the end of game number, I believe, 17, is Rodney Morris now finding himself on the hill, leading David Howard on the score of 10 games to 7. The exact score that, uh, that Medina was ahead of Varner, 10 games to 7. He actually ended up winning that 11 to 8. Um, he had run six racks there. He certainly did. It was yeah. 4 to 5 in favor yeah. of, uh, Var of Varner, yeah. and then uh, Medina went to the table. and Actually, it would have been 7 out. weeks if he hadn't scratched off that 7 ball. He's really an incredible player because I think it was a 91. I played Dan and Medina here at the Sands region, and he ran nine consecutive racks on me. And that, by the way, uh, that may be the AccuStats record right there. I think that's uh, I yeah. think that's tournament play record. That's yeah. a, I don't think, and no one has ever ran more than nine racks in actual uh, tournament play. I think Medina has the record on that. This me if equipment, I'm wrong, Pat. I think this equipment is really suited to Danny's game because the pockets are relatively big. He breaks real well, and if Danny gets an open shot, he's going to. He can, he can freewheel a little bit. If the tables are a little tighter, it's tough for Danny. Oh, I agree. Anytime there's a careless player, I really sh a haphazard player, or a player that doesn't take much time, we'll say it. We'll leave it at that. Anytime there are uh, there are two players playing, one's deliberate and one player you know plays rather quickly, it, the tighter table favors the more deliberate player, no question about it, because he's just more <coughs> careful, and he's playing the percentages, and you really need to play percentages when you're on a tough table. Yeah. I think this match is just about done. I 
I like this guy's game, Billy. I think we're going to hear a lot more from him. He's got that big game because he can run those racks real quick. Yeah, he's got all the necessary tools in his game to develop into a top, top player. He's got the big break. He's an excellent shot maker. He's got a big stroke. He stays solid at the That's table. The and he's got a big heart. So therefore, you know, he's got a lot of great qualities about himself into it that he's, you know, did you happen to see the match he played with Jim Rempe at Valley Forge? No, I, I wasn't at Valley Forge. He finished second in that uh, tournament to Jim Rempe. I heard it was a great match. It was two out of three sets race to nine, and it went hill-hill in the third set. And people tell me that it was a battle. I think our director, Pat Fleming, saw that match. Yeah, I know that uh, Rodney is a, a, a very dangerous player. You know, he's got the big break. He's got the big shot. You know, he's got, he's really unrelenting, he wants to win badly, but uh, sometimes, you know, you don't have a desire. I don't think he really has a lot of desire in this tournament. So we're going to be doing an interview. That's one of the questions I want to ask him when he comes Good up. Good question. Here. Ask him what's on his mind, what's going on, because I can see that as well. He's somewhat distracted right now. But he has so much ability, you know, and talent that he was able to persevere here and play through that and still uh, enable himself to, to win against a formidable opponent than David Howard. Okay, here comes Rodney now. Rick, is that on? It's on the upswing. Okay. Rodney's walking our way. He's got stopped by some people that are congratulating him. I like the name that uh, Scott gave him today. He called him the Rainbow Warrior. The Rainbow Warrior? I yeah. always thought he was Rocket Rodney or something. Yeah, like right. That. He was Rocket Rod, but. Uh, you know, Hawaii is the rainbow state. The rocket. Yeah. Hi, Rodney. Just Hello. talk right into the mic. Hello. Okay, Hello. grab a hold of the mic, Rodney. Okay, congratulations on your win here in, in against David Howard, really a, for, a formidable opponent. David Howard had the experience over you, you know, and he's been in a lot more tournaments than you have. But uh, you were able to uh, handle David Howard quite easily. You pulled away at the end. It was really a nip and tuck match the entire way through, but you managed to pull away at the end. How did you like your performance? How did you feel you played out there today? Uh, I, I felt a little nervous in the beginning, and I, I felt like, you know, it just, you know, once I get my break working, then the confidence comes with it, you know. But uh, overall, I'm hitting the balls real good. Have you played David before? Uh, no, it's my first time. I had a feeling, because he's been off the tour for a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. He was a former, you know, he was one of the great players. Yeah, well, he still is, I yeah. mean, if he plays. Yeah, that's the way I saw it, uh, Rodney. I saw it at the first from the offset of the match. You were a little bit nervous. You missed the nine. Yeah. You were allowing the cue ball to get away from you somewhat. You were having yeah. a problem controlling the cue ball. You were you were laboring out there, but you did finally hit stroke. And when you hit stroke, you just pulled away from him like you did at the end there. Yeah. And I, I'd like to ask you another question in regard to your to your desire at this particular tournament. I was told from someone whether it's true or not, I don't know, but I'm going to ask you this question. Do you have a lot of desire to play well in this tournament, do you have a desire here? Uh, that's a tough question because uh, <laughs> well, there's a lot of things going on. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess you know. <laughs> well, I just wanted to ask you that question. I really don't want to get into the politics of it, yeah. but I just wanted to know if you came to this tournament focused, yeah. and uh, yeah. it, you know, it didn't seem to me that you were from the offset, and you had to work your way in stroke there. Yeah, that's the way I feel. I feel like I'm struggling to get in focus. Yeah, you've got some distractions here this week. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. But you never want to look bad when you play pool. I mean, no. it's a pride thing. You Absolutely. Know? That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anytime a player plays the caliber of pool that you do, certainly has to have a lot of pride in your game. And it, it re definitely reflected in the later stage of the match. Yeah. That really, truly is the mark of a professional, is that you give your best performance no matter what. Yeah. So but uh, in, in if you have anything else to add, just go ahead and hit, Jay. Who do you have next? Do you know? Uh, no. Uh, no. If I play like how I played over here, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Rod, I did notice one thing different. Uh, we were talking about your game and the components of your game. Billy feels that you play be beyond your years maturity-wise. Um, you're very composed. You're very knowledgeable. You know the game very well. You've got, I say you have one of the most powerful breaks in the game, but a difference I noticed between this year and last year is you're controlling your cue ball better on the break. 
Yeah. Is there something you've done there? Is something you've worked on there? Uh, yeah, I worked on it a, a lot these last seven, eight months. I mean, that's yeah. all I focus on is the break. Because I, I think at this level, it's like 80, 90 percent of the game. You know yeah, well, I mean? well, it really, that's a great observation because when you do get at this level, you know, when you're playing with the really the upper echelon world-class player, the break is so important. And, and take, for instance, a guy like Nick Varner. He's such a diligent practicer. When you ever, whenever you're at a tournament, you can watch Nick Varner after the tournaments are over, the tournament matches are over. You'll see him practicing. And what will he be practicing? The He'll break. be practicing his break. Yeah. You know, and you really have to respect that because here's a really a, a knowledgeable man practicing his break. Yeah. So you have to say to yourself, why is he always practicing his break? Because he knows that's where he gets paid off. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and and to see a young player like yourself follow suit and practice the break, that's really inspirational, and I think that you're going to do quite well on the tour. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you will, because like I mentioned to Jay, you know, you have all the necessary tools to do well, you know, you, you're an excellent shot maker, you got a big break, you know, you stay solid at the table, and you got a big heart, so therefore, those are the necessary tools you need to do well, regardless of what sport or game you play. Yeah. And I look forward for you to do well in the future, too. Right. And Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Good luck the rest of the way in this tournament, Okay, Ryan. thanks, okay. Jay. Yeah, so Thank once you. Again, All right, talk to you guys later. So once again, congratulations on your win here, and good luck in your upcoming match, no matter okay. who it may be with. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Well, Jay, uh, I know you, you dropped in late in this match, but uh, you saw the best of Rodney in this particular match. He played extremely well in the later, stage, the later stages of, of, of this match. And let, let, let's, let's focus our cameras. Oh, well, I guess Rick's gone, but in a it's match... It's 10 to 10. Yeah. There's a match on the adjacent table between Rodolfo Luat and Efren Reyes. At one time in the match, Luat was ahead of Reyes six games to two. Uh -huh. And I turned to Johnny Archer and I said, you know, it's a lot more difficult for Luat to beat Reyes than it is for Luat to beat another top, top player because, uh -huh. see, all those years Luat has been playing in Reyes' shadow and Reyes is a hero and he's an idol, you know, he idolizes Reyes. So therefore, for him to de defeat Reyes is going to be quite difficult. Now, all of a sudden, the score is 10 games for Luat, 10 games for Reyes, and Reyes is looks like he's shooting a 3-9 combination to win the match. Well, I know R Luat is really motivated here. And that's the match. Oh, that's got to be disappointing for Rudolfo. Well, Luat played extremely well in the match. Anytime you only lose by one game to Efren Reyes, you know you've played well because Reyes uh, really never plays a, a subpar, you know, a, a He's bad having match. the year of his career right now. Yeah, he certainly is. He's currently ranked number one on the tour, winning how many tournaments this year, Pat? It's won five. Five tournaments this yeah. year. And it... And it's, it isn't how many tournaments he's won, it's the kind of tournaments he's won. He's won three nine ball tournaments, he's won an eight ball tournament, a world eight ball tournament, and who would have guessed it, he won a straight pool tournament. So that just tells you all about Reyes. He's really a, a great player, a great all around player, possibly, maybe just maybe the greatest all around player in the country. Okay, I was just uh, I was just informed by Ted it was going to be episode done. So thanks already. Yeah. So thanks for stopping up today. And joining us in another case of this guy. Oh my pleasure. Hopefully hopefully you'll be able to join us in the world of the map. That'd be great. Okay. I enjoyed it. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot, Jay. On behalf of Jay Hoffman and John Rogers, this is Billy Clarence and thanks a lot for supporting us and Dad just had a call. 1-800-328-0397. Thank you.